I'm here with Cheryl Boglioli, and we've got our gloves on because we're going to get dirty. And I'm going to let you get messy today, too. I'm super excited. We're making these awesome sculpted pendants. Yes. So how do we start? Well, it's real easy. We're going to start with a little bisque face that's already pre-made, and we're going to use some of our textile hardener and just a couple, two pieces of muslin. So you could use muslin, t-shirt, cotton material, anything that you need. And what you wanna do, I find it easier if you just like put half of it in here because you don't want it so dripping wet and then get it and then use the rest of your material to finish saturating your piece. So right? what is bisque for people who've never heard of it? It's like I plaster think of, it as of Paris soup. type of thing. So it's a plaster of Paris mold that was already made. So it's a pre-made object. So now take your piece of fabric and you want some little folds that are in here. So try not to overtouch the face a whole lot as you're wrapping it. And you're doing pretty good, so I don't know, I'm add any a more. Mess. I'm That's sorry. okay, just kind of squish it go. together squish it a little together. bit. Okay. Yep. And then if you'll take your piece of fabric, and you could do it may take one or two pieces, and then just start to wrap the face with this. And create a couple of folds as you're wrapping and just twist it around until you've wrapped the face and you've created this little piece. And see, we're doing it on a non-stick craft mat so that once it dries, then we can just lift it up. So you're there actually you go. gonna you're doing let really it well. dry right on there. Right on the mat, yes. Okay. And then once you've got this wrapped, we wanna add some color to our face. Okay. So we're going to use, I'll use this brush for this and then you can use the same brush and, and paint okay. yours. So we're just gonna dip it in and we just wanna glaze the face real quickly. So, so just brush it. So why aren't we brushing instead of like dipping the face in there? Because if you put too, if you touch the face too much, this dries so quickly that you'll actually get little texture on the face and we don't want that. We want it to be this really smooth, nice look like chocolate. Now is this also acting kind of as an adhesive? It is. It's going to adhere this right to this material. So once this is done, I think we have some pieces that are already finished. That's cool and it's so easy. Yes. Yeah, so you just got that on there. It's gonna dry really quick. Once it's dry, you can pick it up, peel it off, and just paint some on the back as well. Cool. So I think you have a piece that's ready to go, I right? I do, so we're ready to glove yes. off Yes, so you here. can take the gloves off. And then we're gonna, it kinda looks very plain and flat right now. So we're going to do this little technique called dry brushing. And what we're going to mix with that is a little bit of pigment with Ooh, it's like a mica powder or something. It is. It's just a it's just a straight pigment powder. Now I have a really fun technique to do this. I'm going to dip the brush this in. This is a clean dry brush. Clean dry brush. Dip it in until it no longer drips. Okay. And then I'm going to dip it right into, into my powder, right into my powder, and it just picks up. It, it and it knows doesn't exactly contaminate what, that at all. No, it knows okay. exactly what it needs. And then I'm just going to mix it on my nonstick craft mat. Oh, it looks like you made paint. I'm making my own paint. Oh, so you are. Making yes, your own paint. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, I figured it out. You're making your own paint. <laughs> what you want to do now is, if I painted it on here, it's going to just turn the whole thing gold. We don't want to do that. We want to do a dry brush. So if I had an extra canvas or a journal, I could mm -hmm. brush in there. But we're I'm just gonna use paper towel today and wipe most of it off. Oh. Now, you just take it and brush across the top and watch how it just comes to life. Oh, so with a it's little... only picking up just the very top right. texture because so, you rub so much off your brush. Exactly, and you remember at the beginning, I told you to add the extra folds so that it's in here, and that's what's gonna give you the interest when you're creating it. And you can do this same technique. You could put it on a canvas. So here I've added the same faces to a burlap canvas, and then again, dry brush the back of it, and you have a project So I'm going to make go. a guess, and I could be wrong, but I'm guessing that the teal is here here because to make a kind of verdigris look where you're getting that aged copper, you're mm -hmm. either putting the teal on before or after, right? Right, I could have done that before. So do you want to try that with yeah. yours? May I, is it okay same. to use the same brush Absolutely. without cleaning it or anything? Yep. So let me just get this. I'm gonna dip it in here yep. and then make sure that it stops dripping. Exactly. And once it stops dripping, I feel like you there's give one a little drip. There you go. Shake, okay. Now. And I do a dangerous act. Just and I push dip it right it in, in the powder. Mm -hmm. And then onto my nonstick craft mat here. I'm I'm making my own paint. Exactly. Super duper cool. Perfect. And this looks so much darker than I thought it was gonna be. It will. 
because this is a turquoise, so it'll dry. Now wipe some off. Oh, wipe some off. Yep. I missed there that you go. step. There. Okay. Because if not, you're just painting the whole piece again. Right, and you just want to hit those highlights. So now yes. I can see is that kind of greeny color going on there. And then after you had added that green, would you go back and add the copper, or then would you you're stick add just the, yes. with it? Yes, you're going to add the bronze, and by adding the turquoise underneath, so then you get that antiqued verdigris bronze look. <gasps> It's like the Statue of Liberty. Exactly. Super cool. So the more color you add, and you can continue to add layers, and the pigments you can get in different colors to create all kinds of different images. I was going to say, you so you could do. definitely go with silvers if that's your thing. You Silver, could go more yellow, gold, red, bronze, or yes, like multicolored. And in fact, if we look at some of the the pendants, I can see that you have one that's all sort of reds along with the one that's copper. Mm -hmm. I did want to point out something that I thought was unbelievably cool, which is you said, I was like, where did the hole come from for the yeah. next? And you said you can make it at any point, even after it's dry and hard. It is dry and it is hard, but because it is a fabric, I can still just take a paper, paper piercer or something and just po poke through and put a hole directly through. And if you want to turn it into a pendant, then add a jump ring and then put it on a cording. Now, you could also just glue a pen back on the back of it and we could wear it as a pendant. Well, the other thing I think is so cool if you add that pin back to it is that actually you could make a convertible so it would be both a pendant yes. and a pin. And if we look at the canvas too, I know you have some cute little like flowers and stuff in there which I never would have guessed because wrapped in with the fabric, all this texture, all this dimension, this is actually flowers, like it's paper just flowers. just another craft flower, yes. And so really what we need to do is look in our craft rooms for anything that could be texture. I'm assuming things like cheesecloth from the kitchen. Cheesecloth, button, any kind of fabrics, any kind of epoxy type of materials that you could use and just embed them down in there with it. And of course you're painting this brown, but uh, you could use any color that you wanted, right? Yes, and you can mix the colors. So if I wanted to mix an ivory with a yellow ochre and change the color, then you can mix them as well and create something that's totally customized just for you. So cool, and thank you for letting me play along, Cheryl. Yes. This is awesome. So I hope you'll give making your own sculpted pendants or pins or canvases a try. 